Hello, I'm Gary Howell. I'm the founder of Morgan Walsh Consultancy. We provide IT services to local government and also commercial companies. We're going to look at the Netvox RB11E occupancy sensor. How to add it to the Things Network version 3 and also to Tago IO. The sensor itself is of a uh, white plastic construction. It has a PIR sensor on the front as well as temperature and luminosity sensors inside. On the outside we have some buttons, on the top we have a light and also some adjustments for the PIR. On the bottom we find the button to open the case, so we press that down, it's quite firm, and then pries off the front cover. Under here we see a location for the batteries, these are the 3.6 volt lithium type AA, not the 1.5 regular AA batteries. No, they both go the same direction. To replace the cover, we locate the top uh, section where the uh, adjustment buttons are, and then uh, push in to make sure the bottom lug is secure at the bottom. The sensor can be fitted to the wall either using a sticky pad or by uh, screwing this uh, base plate onto the wall. It's a bit fiddly as the ball joint moves around a bit. So here we have the two holes for the wall mounting. And the ball joint inside. Once the uh, plate has been attached to the wall, uh, we reattach the sensor to the plate, tightening it up and ensuring that the sensor is pointing into the room, bearing in mind that the PI sensor detects movement across it rather than towards and away from it. Over now in the Things Network version 3, uh, we've created our application previously, and you can, if you wish, select the brand of Netvox here from the list and then try and find the model here. Uh, unfortunately, the uh, model list, both on Netvox and also other devices, don't normally show the, the model number. So it's very difficult to find the device from this list, which is the reason why we normally select manual and then put in the details from the spec sheet. So in this case, it's going to be Europe for us and Mac version uh, 102, revision B. And then paste in the dev EUI, the app EUI, and the app key, which you'll have received from your distributor or uh, sales organization. Finally, on the screen, uh, we type in a suitable device end ID, device ID, and then register end device. Pressing the button on the sensor will illuminate the light. And this will now send a join request to the Things Network, as we see there in the console, followed by a set of data on port 6, which will be our first set of data for uh, luminosity, temperature, and of course whether the sensor considers the room occupied. Over in uh, Tego IO, we go to Devices and Add Device, and then search for RB11. Here, select the Netvox uh, sensor shown, and then uh, the Things Network version 3. Type in the device name, which I normally make the same as the one in Things Network, followed by the device EUI. Once that's done, create, create, create my device, and then continue. And as is the new application within Things Network, I need to create a link uh, between Tego.io and Things Network. So I do this by generating the authorization, typing in a suitable name here. and click the Generate button, followed by the Copy button to copy the author authorization code. Welcome back now to the Things Network, where we go to our application, Webhook, select Tego.io, and then type in our Webhook ID, and paste in the authorization code, which we just copied. Clicking then uh, creates Tego IO webhook. We'll now create this uh, this integration, and the this means that this application here in Things Network is linked then to Tego IO. Over in Tego IO, we're on the device here. Go to uh, Live Inspector and press the Play button on the right. And now, if we press the button on the device itself, it'll send some data and it'll go through the Things Network through the authorization 
and here end up here in the live inspector. Opening the payload inspector and scroll down towards the bottom, we'll see the actual data we need, which is battery temperature, illuminance, and the occupy field, which indicates whether it's occupied or vacant. We'll just pop this on to a quick dashboard. So open up a dashboard, uh, it's an empty one I created earlier, add widget, and we're just going to simply select the display object. So here we can select uh, up to as many fields as you wish. We're going to select the four fields we saw earlier. So within our widget editing, we go to title, put in a suitable title such as Office One. And then from the device list, select the device we just created, which happens to be the first one. And then the first field, which is going to be uh, Occupy. Now we're going to add the second field to add new data, select the same device, and this time we're going to select temperature. Again, add new data, same device, and this time it's going to be illuminance. And then finally, the battery field. Click Create, resize the widget, and then using the buttons on the right and left, we can scroll through the data on this one widget. We hope you found this useful. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and if there's anything we can help with, please do get in touch. Thanks very much.